KwaZulu-Natal province of South Africa has the largest population of Indian people outside of India, of course. Why is that the case? You may wonder. Don't worry, I have got you. In today's video, we're going to be answering exactly that question. Why? Just sit back, relax, and hopefully you will enjoy watching this episode of African Hossa A. Colonial. 
colonial Natal, now known as the province of KwaZulu Natal, between 1860 and 1911. We do not learn about these things at school, but I remember being told, not at school, but uh, by my grandmother that the Indians were enslaved in KZN because after the KZN was colonized, the Zulu people were very stubborn and they said, you know, no, 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 we're not gonna work for you. And they wanted to find a way uh, of building for themselves when they were colonizing KZN and they didn't want to do the work for themselves so they went to India and told some of the poor Indians that they can be taken to new land where they will be given jobs and an opportunity to build wealth for themselves and the Indians agreed only for them to come here to become enslaved by the British who colonized South Africa. That's what I was told, but now let's read what this article is saying to learn more. Although the Indian migration to the country was supposed to be seen as goodwill, it was slavery by contract set up by the colonial power of Britain. Many South African Indians came um, trace their heritage back to these workers who came from Indian ports of Madras and Kolkata. I'm sorry if I butchered the names. And I remember being told that the Indians were promised a better life and South Africa who ended up being enslaved were poor and some of them didn't know how to read so they just signed a contract, signed a contract not knowing that they're signing their lives to becoming slaves basically and when they got the side they had no way of going back so yeah. During the latter years in the 19th century, small wives of Indian migrants arrived in the country from Mauritius via the port of Port Elizabeth and Cape Town and most notably Durban. So they arrived through the port of Kebeha, uh, and then life during the 19th century. The city of Durban became a thriving Indian neighborhood during the later years of the 19th century. The growing community of workers were, uh, were catered to by the first Indian merchant stores that opened in town in 1872 where they were selling spices and other necessities. Although the province of Natal now gazed in, Indians, Indian people would work as cheap labor at sugar cane fields. Yes, that is what I remember my grandmother telling me is that they worked in sugar cane fields and KZN is the largest sugar cane producing uh, province in South Africa. It's famous for producing sugar. They were normally endangered for a period of five years and had intensive task of cultivating, growing and harvesting sugar cane. After this period of work ended, a contract of indenture offered workers the option of returning back to India or a, a plot of land. History suggests that a small number opted to return um, back to their home country whilst the majority of Indians 
Indian workers accepted land to start their own ventures. During the time um, Indians arrived in South Africa to set up trade plots, expanding the community once more. And then on the 20th century, there was a 20th century legislation. The Indian population had grown extensively at the time of the 20th century. Freedom from their indentured contracts allowed workers to integrate into communities both socially and economically. Thus, in turn, pressured colonial authorities to restrict the community. As prejudice, settlers were uncomfortable with the change of pace. A large amount of legislation over the period of just about 100 years followed and curbed the mobility, trading rights, settlement patterns, marital choice, education access of South Africans of Indian descent. In the early years of 1900s, the republics of Transvaal and Orange Free, Straight, Free State Transvaal and Orange Free State passed laws which restrict the rights of all Indians to live in areas designated for white residents only. South African Indians were denied the right to vote to own land or run businesses without proper registration. And then we had the South African Indian Residence Movement after that. During the 1900s, South African Indians were restricted and persecuted by the government for their existence. However, the community did not shy away from political activism and rose up against prejudice and extreme legislation they were facing. Mohandas Mahatma Gandhi first came to South Africa in May of 1893 as a 23-year-old barrister to assist Indians in the civil lawsuit. At the time, he had no interest in or experience of political uh, politics, you know, except for a strong sense of duty. So, um, an attachment to truth and urge to save humanity. He just wanted better for his people, but he was not like interested in politics at all. What he experienced in South Africa changed his life forever. He became concerned about educating and uniting Indians such that he helped established the Natal Indian Congress in 1894 in the Transvaal British Indian Association and the Transvaal British Indian Association in 1903 to defend the rights of Indians. Gandhi led the Indian Ambulance Corps during the Anglo Boer War in 1899 to 1902. So, yeah. He also funded the social movement in the magazine Parks 
in 1917 and thus established that South Indians were a force to be reckoned with. And then in 1906, Gandhi started a peaceful protest movement. And then in 1908, he and 30,000 other peaceful protesters banned their registration certificates in protest of the discriminatory law against Indians. He then, um, and then South African Prime Minister General Smarts yielded after years of struggle, singing an agreement accepting all the main demands. During mid 1900s, early apartheid legislation came into effect which meant that severe restrictions were placed on now white populations. South African Indians were living in KZN. Um, they were uprooted from their communities and moved 20 to 30 kilometers away to Indian-only townships. Indian activists with other freedom fighters in the liberation movement during the apartheid years. Many were imprisoned alongside their comrades at the old fort in Johannesburg, Deben Central, Iqobo Prison and Robben Island. The late President Nelson Holihlahla Dalibunga Mandela and the late Indian politician Ahmed fought side by side in the struggle which eventually ended in 1994 is when the first democratic elections took place so now everyone voted and obviously people voted for Talibunga and then many South African Indians practiced their traditions and social customs as well as their religion and celebration festivals both Muslim and Hindu Indians reside in the country and have dedicated places of worship one of the largest Hindu temples in the southern hemisphere is located in the township of Catsworth in KZN South African Indians are known for their flavorful cuisine such as spicy uh, curries, chutney and other savory foods. They are also known for their beautiful traditional clothing worn on special occasions such as weddings, religious days and social gatherings. Their music and dance also plays an important role as part of celebrations. Although some traditional customs are no longer as normalized as it once was, such as arranged marriages, South African Indians have remained true to their heritage. And that was an article titled Indian South Africans and it is by the way 
website called Siapona Africa, which means we see Africa. So that is basically it for learning more about Indians and the struggles they went through and how they came about to live in South Africa. So what did we learn in today's video? Indians were taken from their home countries and signed contracts to come and work in South Africa. They were promised a better life and when they came in here they were enslaved by the British and after a while they were able to fulfill or their contracts were eventually terminated and they were promised or they were given opportunity to either get land in South Africa or go back home. A lot of them decided to stay and take the land but some of them opted out for going back home to India. Whilst they still remain behind, a lot of, of them did not have rights just like black South Africans didn't and only people who had better lives were the colonizers and in places like the Free State for example they're like no you can't you can't you can't leave yeah you can't do anything yeah and then um, Gandhi who had no political experience none whatsoever could see that his people were being treated unfairly and he had no interest in politics but because of how his people were treated he wanted to fight for their freedom he wanted to fight for the freedom of indian south africans and then he joined forces with other south african black politicians who were fighting for freedom of the country and they joined forces with the likes of Nelson Mandela and they some of them we ended up in prison just like the black South Africans and eventually they were free they were free they are many Indian South African townships that still exist in South Africa today but mostly in the Zulu Natal province of South Africa but after South Africa became a democratic country in 1994 they started moving to other provinces and they were able to build lives throughout the country and uh, yeah how did you find today's video you know about all this? Did you know that the KwaZulu Natal province, Durban city, is the largest city with the highest population of Indians outside of India, of course? Did you know about how South African Indians came to be? Why were they or why are they Indians? in South Africa. Let me know your thoughts. And we have come to the end of today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Super thanks if you like the video and click the join button which is the blue button next to the red subscribe button in order for you to become an exclusive member of this channel i will catch you guys on the next one have a great day or night wherever you are in the world